Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and I'm here today to teach you how to set up your fly reel. You know, my first bit of advice is not to do it. Have a fly shop do it. If you buy a reel from a reputable fly shop or outfitter, they should do all of this for you, no questions asked, and they should do it right. Um, if you don't have a reputable fly shop nearby, uh, give me a call or send me an email. I've got a great recommendation for a great online fly shop for you, by the way, that we can still offer that great service online when you buy a reel and a fly line. But anyway, let's say that you don't have a fly shop nearby or you just want to do this yourself. I'm going to show you how to do this really simply and easily. Now, the first thing to discuss is whether you're going to set this reel up for right hand or left hand retrieve. And typically, the way the industry goes these days, if you're a right handed caster, you're typically going to reel with your left hand. Okay, most of your reels come set up for left hand retrieve. If you are left handed and you want right hand retrieve, well, we need to switch this over. Um, there's usually instructions that come with the reel. Most of them are easily switchable and you might have to do a little finagling, flip a disc around uh, to, to change it so that you have the retrieve this way and the drag that way, okay? When you buy a reel from us, just make sure you let us know whether you're right hand or left hand retrieve and we'll do it for you. If not, again, there's usually instructions that come with your reel. So that being said, there's two pieces to this puzzle. And then it's first and foremost the fly line backing and then the fly line itself. The first thing you're going to put on the reel is the fly line backing, okay? And backing is braided dacra that's designed for this purpose. And it serves two, there's two reasons for backing. First and foremost, the backing fills up space on the fly reel, okay? Most of your fly lines are approximately 80 foot in length. And if you only put that fly line on there, it's only going to fill up so much space on the reel. You'll have a bunch of extra space. And what that means is every time you crank, you're not bringing in much line, or at least as much as you could. But by putting plenty of backing on there, we thus increase the size of the arbor of the reel. And every time we crank, we bring in more line. The second reason for having fly line backing on there is the fact that if a fish goes further than the 80 foot of your fly line, you've got at least 100 yards or more of backing uh, uh, tied to the fly line and attached to the reel as an insurance policy. And the way I figure it, if a fish goes further than 380 foot, he deserves to have everything and you've got a heck of a story to tell. You want to make sure that you use proper fly line backing and it's available in 20 pound and 30 pound diameters. And it's not so much the breaking strength, it's the diameter, depending on how much space you wanna fill up and the abrasion resistance in case it is gonna be rubbing up against coral or sharp rocks or anything. Uh, it also comes in a variety of colors, of course, traditional white, and then there's fluorescent yellow, we've got bright orange, even blue these days, really popular. No big secret there, a lot of folks like to you know, kind of color things up and have a certain color scheme so it looks cool. The only piece of advice is if you have a bright orange fly line, go with a contrasting color in the backing so that you know where that connection is. Um, so just go with a contrast and then uh, come up with other, whatever color scheme you want to based on the reel and the fly line. The first thing you need to do is you need to attach the backing to the reel and we're going to use a a uh, simple uni knot, which I've always called an arbor knot, but it, it is also a uni knot, which you can use to tie your fly on, but it's really simple. You're going to come around the arbor of the fly reel, essentially making a loop around the arbor of the reel. Then you're going to take that tag in and you're going to bring it back to towards the reel and then fold it over top of both of these standing pieces now. And that forms a loop right here and then it couldn't be easier. It's an overhand knot five times. You take the tag in through that loop, come through five times, and then pulling on the standing end, you're gonna tighten that up, and then that you're gonna pull on the standing end and it's gonna cinch right down onto the reel. 
Okay, now it doesn't slide too well with this fly line that I'm demonstrating so that you can see it, but let's do it with the backing and then you can see how that cinches down. Okay, so again, come around the arbor of the reel, essentially making a loop around that reel. So you've looped the backing around the arbor of the reel. Then you're going to take the tag in, you're going to pinch it right there, take the tag in and come back towards the reel and then go over top of both of those now standing in pieces and you've just formed a loop. See that nice beautiful loop right there? Now I can come through that loop, just an overhand knot, come through that loop five times. Pull on the standing in and bada book, bada boom, there is your uni knot or arbor knot. Uh, just to be clear, there is another uh, official arbor knot that a lot of the spin and bait casting guys use. I think this uni knot is a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and trim this tag end. No reason not to. Then slide it down by pulling on the tag end, and I'll use my thumbnail or the nail of my index finger to get that cinched down really good on the reel right there. And there you go. Okay. Then you might have to use the buddy system or set up a, a, a little rig but most of your spools of backing are going to have a hole in the middle. You can slide a, a pen through there or your nail knot tool. And now I'm simply going to spool that backing on there um, off the spool, making sure that you get it nice and even. Okay. Most freshwater reels take at least 100 yards. Uh, a lot of them these days, 125 yards. Uh, most saltwater or big game applications are going to take 200, 225, sometimes even more. Uh, you can consult with your local fly shop or the reel manufacturer. Go to our website, look at the reel, and we're going to tell you how much backing goes on that reel based on the weight of the fly line that you're putting on there. Okay? And then your next step is we're going to tie on the fly line. And we're going to use a simple nail knot for that. Okay, so we've got at least 100 yards of backing on the reel. And now we're going to pull the fly line out of the box. When you pull the fly line out of the box, similar kind of spool. It's got a hole in the middle so that you can insert your nail knot tool or a, uh, a pen through there, pencil, what have you. Uh, makes the job a lot easier. And this fly line, uh, it's gonna have some like pipe cleaners or some companies use some little rubber coated little band type things. But what I do is open up those pipe cleaners and fold them over the edges of the spool like this. That allows you easy access so the line comes off easy and also helps prevent that spool from coming apart uh, while you're doing this. Now, it's very important, friends, to understand that this weight forward fly line the rear end of it, the, the uh, running line that you're going to attach to the backing is always the accessible end, okay? The weight forward part, the meat of the fly line, the business end is on the inside of the spool. You can't really get to that tip. Um, just to avoid any further confusion, they've got a little sticker on here that says this end to the reel right there. I can't tell you, friends, how many times we see fly lines that are put on backwards. The weight forward portion is attached to the backing, and people are trying to cast with the running line, wondering why they can't cast. I won't mention the name of any box stores, but uh, we see it a lot. And it's uh, very, very important that you, where it says this end, to attach this end to the reel, make sure that you do that, okay? So now we're going to tie a simple nail knot. I know we've done this before, but let me go ahead and show you. This is um, one tool that you could use. This is the new Matter of Outfitters nail knot tool. Uh, we're having these custom made and uh, they should be available on the website if not already. And I'll do a separate tutorial on this. For today, I'm going to show you how to tie a nail knot using the Tie Fast Knot Tire. And this is pretty easy and a great and effective way to attach your backing. 
So the tie fast knot tire, um, I call this a little thumb rest. Your thumb's going to go right on top. I usually hold this in my opposite hand, my left hand. And then you see it's got a little fork at the tip here. So you come right down the middle of the tool and bring the tag end right out the front and through that fork in the nose of the tool. And then it's really simple. You're going to make about six or seven turns back towards your thumb. And then I use my index finger to support those loops. I'll moisten this so it's easier to bring it through. And then you slide that tag in right underneath and right out the nose of the tool and then pull it tight, okay? Keep everything nice and tight as you always do with knots. And now it couldn't be simpler. You insert the fly line right up the opposite direction underneath all those wraps and then pinch it in place on that little thumb rest and now you're going to take the tag end and you're simply going to gently pull that knot right off the nose of the tool and bada book, bada bang, it slides right into place. You might have to do a little bit of finagling with your fingers to get that in place and then pull on the standing end and the tag end and there you have a very simple nail knot. Okay, and then you're going to be able to trim those tag ends close. Put a pen through there and then start to reel on your fly line. Again, making sure that you get it nice and even. Now, last step is you need to put on a leader and go fishing. And remember um, that most, if not all, fly lines these days come with a loop in the end. So for now, you can go loop to loop, loop your leader on. You need to tie on a fly and go fishing. Um, just real quick, another variation on the tie fast knot tire is the tie fast combo tool, which is wildly popular around here. It's a decent pair of nippers, but it also has like a mini tie fast knot tire here on the front. And then on the other side, it does have a little hook sharpener, which is of course very, very important to keep your hook sharp. But again, same deal here. Exactly the same, just on kind of on a micro scale, but I'm going to put my backing right down through the nose of that tool, pinch it in place with my thumb, and then go about six or seven wraps, slide the backing right down and through there, and then come right underneath those wraps and come out the nose of the tool. Okay, and now you're going to insert that fly line right up and inside there, pinch it in place, and then you're going to slide those wraps right off the nose of the tool, and it falls right into place. Pull on the standing end of the tag end to tighten that knot, trim your tag ends, and off you go, spool your fly line on. So really, really easy. You're going to tie the uni knot to attach your back into your spool, get your uh, correct amount of backing on there, then you're going to tie the nail knot, and like I said, for now, I recommend the tie fast knot tire or the tie fast combo tool. This combo tool is great to have with you. You can also use a nail knot and a pinch to attach your leader to the tip of your fly line. Let's say that the loop on the front of the line breaks at, at some point during the day or over the course of the season. You may have to nail knot your leader onto the tip of your fly line and having this little um, mini tie fast knot tire there with you right on your nippers is pretty cool. So of course, um, friends, if you have any questions, you can send me an email at admin at madriveroutfitters.com or better yet, pick up the phone and call me here at Mad River Outfitters. This is what we do for a living and we're always happy to help. And I'll, as always, we appreciate you watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe. That really helps us out. And stay tuned because we've got a lot more coming at you. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.